Okay, everyone, I think we're going to get started with uh, the second round of workshops for the evening. So um, tonight we're going to cover three things that um, unfortunately we can't do code labs for. Um, we can show you, we, we're going to do our own code labs um, directly on, the, on our computers, but um, for varying, for varying reasons, um, what you need a, a Java IDE, or sorry, the Google Web Toolkit, you need a Java IDE, which isn't installed on these, and Gears apparently can't be installed either. And the Google Mashup Editor is still on the whitelisting process, so. But, um, you can see, we still have some rich presentations on all three, so. Okay, so we're gonna kick off the evening with a short introduction to the Google Mashup Editor. And um, so that's kind of been my bread and butter for um, since May, since I started at Google. Um, I've been supporting the, the Google Mashup Editor, so hopefully I can give a pretty good presentation on it. Okay, so Google Mashup Editor, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, what exactly is a mashup? Especially if you're new to, new to the web um, world, you know. You're used to, um, if you're used to uh, desktop-based development, you may not be too aware of, of what really comprises a mashup. So a mashup is, is actually fairly simple. It's a web application hybrid. So it's, it's a web application that uses one API and another API, or some other form, kind of like, like maybe screen scraping or whatever, which is discouraged, but um, to pull together data and, uh, from different sources and make them work together and present an almost entirely new web experience. Um, oh, we forgot to mention this in, in Trevor's talk, but uh, there's a, a really great website out there called programmableweb.com. Yeah, I'm going to use the H key. <laughs> okay. So programmableweb.com, uh, Pamela probably knows more of the history about it since she's actually worked on it occasionally. But um, uh, it's this really great resource for finding new, for not only finding mashups, um, like to see what everybody else has, has done in the past, um, maybe getting inspiration for your own web applications, but it's also a great resource for finding what kind of APIs are available. So for example, um, I did a music-based mashup in, in the Google Mashup Editor um, back in the summer, and I used the, uh, this category listing to find a whole bunch of, uh, to find all the APIs that are based around music, and uh, I, was able to, I was able to find um, last FMs, yeah, here we go, see the, the category listing right here. We can see MP3 tunes and lyrics fly, and and uh, Radio Time and Rhapsody, they all have APIs that you can potentially use in your own web applications. And so this is really awesome because, you know, it gives you, um, affords you the opportunity to, to make really interesting things that maybe no one has ever made before just by combining someone else's service, someone else's data, in, uh, and do it completely legally to boot, so even better. So, um, as Trevor mentioned in his talk earlier, um, we're encouraging you uh, for this contest to go out and branch out and look at what other APIs are available. There's a whole ton of stuff. Um, you can see the size of the scroll bar. Look how many things there are. All kinds of categories, too. Um, look at how many mapping APIs there are, for example. Um, and Google offers quite a suite of web services, but there's just a fraction of, of, them, of the thousands that are probably that you could find if you, if you looked hard enough. So, um, so we encourage you to to, go, to use the site um, on Sunday and Monday and um, work with it and see see what types of things you could bring into your app. So, this so will go back to the presentation. All right. So, programmable web. Um, 
can help you make mashups. And um, I'll show you a few mashups right here. These are ones that I pulled. So if you were here for uh, Pamela's uh, Maps API talk on, one, on Tuesday, um, you saw this really neat little um, housing mashup uh, that combined uh, data from uh, Google Maps and data from Microsoft Virtual Earth to give you like a little 3D perspective and also how, um, Craigslist to actually pull in the housing listings. So um, I found out about that one after I put these slides together. So this was one of the first um, to combine Craigslist and Google Maps. And uh, this is called Housing Maps. It was one of the, um, this is actually predated the Maps API. Um, apparently the guy just kind of um, uh, copied the Maps API on his own server and, and uh, or the, sorry, the Maps, um, Google Maps client code and used it to, um, to build this really neat little interactive thing. So, I mean, you go to uh, Craigslist before this and you see, um, you see a whole bunch of address listings and you see a whole bunch of addresses. And you say, well, you know, I mean, I have all the data here, but it's kind of hard for me to visualize. Is it close to? Um, is it close to the freeway? Is it close to the schools? Is it close to this park? Whatever. So just adding that extra element, being able to put all these on the map and see, oh, you know, this. I was looking at this one, but this one's so much more convenient. And being able to, to look at all the data, you see like mile listings and you know all the, all this type of thing really adds a new uh, dimension to uh, Craigslist. And this is like the perfect application for the type of mashups that we're talking about. Uh, this next mashup uh, also uses maps. Um, it uh, looks like it's uh, plotting all these uh, green um, destinations, it looks like. Um, I don't know, I, I picked this one because I thought it looked really nice. It looked really pretty. But um, you can see that um, a mashup can be as simple as having an a RSS feed of geotag data such as this, and then having like a little map and putting and uh, plotting it. Um, it's kind of a simple mashup, but you get the idea. Um, this next one, um, I, I like uh, just because we all sometimes uh, <coughs> want to know like what the weather is if we're planning a vacation, um, you know, or if we're even planning just like a little trip uh, to see what the weather's like. And uh, this one pulls weather data and um, plots it on a little globe. You can't see it here, but the globe actually rotates, and it's really nice. Um, it's kind of actually reminds me of um, of the of the little um, weather application on the Wii, um, of the little um, showing all the data right on the map on the rotating Earth. And let's see, here's a couple more. The one on the bottom, uh, one on the bottom uh, matches up Google Trends with. Um, some other data. So it picks out, I guess if you're tired of your job, of your development job, you can pick out uh, what jobs are um, the most popular by language. You can see that PHP is pretty high, um, this red bar right here. And then um, um, this blue bar, Python, is pretty high. And it also tells you, it also matches this with data about how many jobs are in which country. So you can say that um, India has quite a few Python jobs. Um, Pakistan has more. Uh, PHP jobs, that type of thing. So that's pretty useful. Okay, so more specifics about the Google Mashup Editor. So what does it do exactly? It's um, it is Google's solution for building web-based mashups. It was introduced uh, this past May at uh, at uh, Google Developer Day, um, and has since been um, in development and um, iterated uh, several times. Um, unfortunately, it's still uh, a whitelist process, and I would volunteer to whitelist everybody, but um, unfortunately, I can't access the whitelisting app. However, um, if, you are, if you guys are interested in um, using it during uh, the contest, I'm, uh, just let me know afterwards, and I might be able to uh, help you out. All right, so the features. Um, GME is a completely web-based app. It's not desktop-based. You access it through your browser. It's an Ajax development environment. It's actually built in the Google Web Toolkit, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Um, you use uh, declarative XML syntax. So what that means is it's very similar to uh, the Google Gadgets, um, if you saw it earlier, in that it's, it's an actual XML document. And um, um, I guess this will probably be more apparent when I actually give you an example in just a second. But um, Jimmy includes um, a number of pre-built modules um, like, for example, GM List, GM Map, 
that type of thing, and you just include them, and, and uh, you set it to a data source, for example, an RSS feed or an Ada feed, and boom, you have you have a list displayed right there. So you don't have to worry about using the AJAX feed API if you want to bring a simple list into your mashup. All you have to do is put a GM list and point it to the feed, and GME handles all that for you. Um, it also includes um, templating features. So, for example, not all of your your lists won't all look the same mashup to mashup because you can you can use GME's templates to give them an appearance. So that means that you can create um, you can create mashups as, uh, that look like this and mashups that look like this. For example, um, um, you're not limited to one general looking template. So. Um, on the slide. It's integrated um, with um, a lot of Google properties. Um, among, among the key ones are um, Google Maps and Google Base, but we also, uh, we're going to talk about later, we can also pull in feeds from YouTube, from Google Spreadsheets, from Google Calendar, um, from, uh, you know, uh, Casa Web Albums and, and everything else. So we have another uh, thing of features. So. It's great to be able to present data to users, right? So you want to, for example, um, you know, display a, a list of geotagged information and then have a map right beside it that has all of the, uh, the geotagged, like housing maps, for example. But it's also wonderful if you can get data from users, if you can make it that much more interactive for your audience. And so GME includes um, um, two writable feeds. And so what this means is that you can define your own feeds in line. And it's um, very similar to uh, a database app in a lot of ways, except in store, instead of storing your um, uh, data in a database, you're storing it in a feed. And so I guess the um, easiest way of, of demonstrating this is to point out that uh, the registration forms that a lot of you used to sign up for the Google All Nighter is a GME mashup. So you're actually entering your, your name and you're entering your email address and it's adding it to a feed. It's allowing you to filter by that feed. It's allowing you to do all this like um, this rich kind of uh, um, interactive stuff and with your own data into it. So it's a lot more than just pulling in data and showing it. You can actually have your users enter it as well. So there's a JavaScript API. Um, in addition to the GM modules I mentioned earlier, um, you put in just regular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is how you make um, the mashups look um, that, um, very good in the web browser and also add to a lot of interactive features. There's an event handling mechanism. That means that if I select uh, something in a list, I can have an alert pop up, or I can have this other module do something completely random. Like, for example, um, um, in the Google All Nighter, uh, uh, registration form when you enter your email address at the bottom and you click go it's it sets out a, a list filter and it shows you a completely different view so that's uh, built in um, all mashups are currently hosted on google servers um, whatever name google mashups.com and um, you can also sub you can also easily make your mashups into gadgets so if you want to add um, your little mashup to your uh, iGoogle homepage um, that's entirely possible so I'm going to give you the Tencent tour right now. Um, let's see. I guess uh, I'll do that. Okay. I assume Trevor probably has some. Uh, you have Camino on here, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll show you in Camino. So if you go to editor.googlemashups.com, um, that's uh, the base page for it. You can also find it on, uh, on our uh, code.google.com slash GME has the link. And um, you can talk to me about uh, getting whitelisted. I'll try to do it for you tomorrow if you're really interested in using it for the contest. Otherwise, you can uh, click the link right up here. And, um, and uh, I'll add you when I get back next week.
So we'll go ahead and sign in as me. Jeez, Trevor. All right, it's loading here. Jimmy does a lot better on a good wireless connection than it does on uh, what we're getting now. But we can try to see what we can do here. All right. So this is the editor. And so you'll notice that uh, right here we have basically where we enter our application. This is the kind of uh, Gmail, uh, the, the XML syntax I was talking about. Um, you put in uh, special, what are called GM tags, like GM page, GM map, GM list, that type of thing. Look at your application and mix that with the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to style it and make it interactive. Um, you can have any number of uh, projects, and all of your projects are automatically put on Google Code for you. So that's nice because um, in case uh, the editor is slow or you're on a slow connection like I am, you can, uh, you can access your uh, data through Subversion and just commit that way. And um, you can have multi-page apps, so if you did, you, for example, see uh, several pages listed there. So we'll build our first application. Everyone's familiar with the Hello World application. And so it's really simple. All you have to do is Can the you same one. The, um, the text size a little bit? Oh, sure. Yeah, something like that. A little bit there? Okay. All right, so this is it, Hello World. And I'm just going to click Test here. And it should compile it at the bottom. What it, what it does when you compile it, it turns all the GM tags and it uses logic to, uh, to turn it into HTML, CSS, whatever. And then it loads it in the sandbox. So the sandbox is a little tab um, that shows you uh, basically your compiled mashup. So there it is. Uh, that's the simplest three-line app that I can build using GME. It doesn't really do anything. So let's, uh, let's make it a little bit better. So hmm, let's display a list really fast. So. Um, if you uh, were here yesterday, you'll, you'll have seen uh, Pamela's uh, uh, demonstration of, of the Ajax Feed API, um, which uh, basically pulled in a feed and, and let, you, uh, let you display a feed right on your, um, an XML feed uh, right on your uh, JavaScript app. So I'm going to do the same thing, except instead of an entire half page of code, I'm going to use one line. So I specify, I can specify an ID for my list. And then this data tag is the most important attribute, or the most important uh, right, attribute. So you can point this to the location of a feed on any server. So for example, I'm a big fan of dig.com. I'm going to go to it right now, and I'm going to get the location of the feed, which is this little squircle right here. Uh, all right. Copy link location. All right, paste that in there right there. And let's test it now and see what happens. So this is still a three-line application. All we've done is use one of the GME's built-in uh, um, modules, the GM list. All right, as soon as it loads in, we're going to see a listing of the headlines of uh, the top headlines on Dig right now. There we go. Boom. So just like that, one one list, you get uh, one GM list tag, and you get a full feed right in the thing, and, and it has selection built in already, and uh, it's all styled nicely to you. Of course, you can override the styles. Um, I'll do one more thing for you, and I'm going to add a GM map, which is Pamela's bread and butter. And let's see. I'll pick a good um, geotag feed. So the one that I like to use actually is, um, well, that one might not be available right now. So we'll use Earthquake GeoRSS. I know that there's a good feed out there that gives you information. Um, 
Well. All right, even better. Since I can't find the feed I'm going to look for, I'm going to make it an interactive feed. So I'm going to set my GM list just like I had before. And I'm going to set a template. How about that? Um, I'm going to set the data source to be the dollar app feed. So the dollar app feed is a special feed. Remember I mentioned earlier that GME can, uh, can accept data from the user. So the dollar app right there, dollar uh, left brace app, right brace, that's a way of saying use the app feed. And the app feed is a special feed that is application wide so everybody can see it. This is a, as opposed to we also have a user feed, which I won't get into too, into too much detail, but the user feed is private to the user. So use the app feed for, for right now and we can use any stripe we want. And we'll use one of the built-in templates, so we'll use simple. And so GME needs to know who's writing to the feed, which is why any of you who use my uh, Google Online or Mashup had to sign in before you could add yourself. So we'll just set the authenticate to true. <coughs> and we'll demonstrate really quickly here how you can make your uh, Mashup interactive. So as soon as you set that authenticate attribute, um, it tells it tells uh, Google Maps better to pop up a, a little uh, display box so you can uh, get the user's email and password so they can actually write data. All right, coming up. This is a completely web-based, um, a completely. Uh, um, asynchronous application in that um, your application can load and, and uh, feed data can load here on different parts of the screen and your application doesn't have to wait for that feed data, it can just load in the background. So right here, um, I, all I did was, uh, right, that's still a three line app and I have this, uh, this kind of empty table at the moment but it has this button, new item. When I click new item, um, I'm presented with a field and so I can type whatever um, I want in this field. And then boom. Just like that, I've added new information to my feed and it's been saved. And um, I can uh, go back and access it later. So it becomes, even with these, these really simple examples, it becomes very obvious uh, pretty early on just how powerful this is and um, just how many cool applications you can find for it. So in the interest of time, I'm going to go back to the presentation and continue on there. Ah, Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Trevor, where can I find my... <clears throat> I'm looking for my presentation. Is that it? It's on the projector. Yeah, how do I... How do I present this? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, sorry. I can't actually see it here, but that's fine. Yeah, there's two displays, right? There's a display right in the projector. How do I get a nice little presentation here? So this is just a, a few, so the examples that I showed you before were, were early mashups uh, from, or actually early to, to more modern mashups. Um, these are actually mashups that were built with GME. Come on. Whoa, that is awesome. I have no clue. Okay. Well, it's not a part of that. What's that? Okay. So this is, uh, this was actually built back in uh, baseball season, obviously. So this is pretty neat. Um, it uses a few uh, interesting elements of GME. Uh, the first is it uses uh, the GM map. Um, so all you have to do is, is using the XML syntax that um, I showed you earlier, you just pop in the GM map and it shows you GM map. It, um, it uses uh, writable feeds. Since the person who built this application couldn't find um, a listing, a nice little RSS listing of the baseball games, he actually entered them himself. And he also included uh, geotagged information. So that means that he can display them really nicely on the map. And he also included information 
about, in, in the list, he's just using a gene list, an editable gene list to include information about each of the games, including um, the URLs for the pictures of the teams. And so he's tied, he's tied it in so that when you click on a particular um, location, for example, this one right here in, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, you can get um, a little synopsis of the game. And uh, you see it really nicely, the little, the little icons of the teams that are playing. He's also tied that in with the, this calendar that's right here, which is um, also a built-in GME, um, GME calendar. And what's really neat here is that um, you, can, you can see really faintly that the 8 is selected. And you can see that that corresponds to um, July 8th when this game is being played. If you were, for example, to click uh, July 18th, um, he's tied it in so that uh, the map view will change and the selected pin will change and you'll see the game that's being played on the 18th of the month. And, um, and this is uh, you know, the synopsis again here. And this is only one page of the application. He, uh, he had news, which uh, in a discussion board, he had shopping and shopping tied into Google Base. It's just really neat, the types of interactive uh, stuff that you can make um, with very little effort. Um, most of the stuff, most of the samples I've written, which have been pretty decent samples, my personal opinion, um, were, uh, were written in like one afternoon. So this is uh, the same matchup that you saw earlier, uh, the San Francisco Giants one. Uh, this is uh, basically um, a quick listing of the code. You see um, GM map right here, display the GM map. You see the GM calendar here. You see this little thing called GM handle event, and um, that makes it so that when you um, uh, click something in one, like for example, you click the calendar date, the map will respond according to the item, will respond according to that type of thing. All right, so I already showed you the demo. Okay, we're going to talk about the G properties. G properties, shorthand for Google properties, obviously. Um, so yesterday we had a pretty extensive presentation on the Google Data APIs, and one of the, the key things about that was that uh, Google Data APIs are based on the Atom Publishing Protocol. The Atom Publishing Protocol um, includes um, the Atom uh, specification for like feeds, so it's very similar to RSS. So GME can natively import RSS and Atom feeds without any trouble at all. You just said it like, like you saw earlier as the data source of a GM map, of a GM list, of a GM calendar. And so all just um, because all these um, Google properties work or are based off of uh, the Atom publishing <coughs> protocol, you can all of a sudden bring in Google Base into your, um, into your application. You can bring in, um, I can show events in my Google Calendar. I can show, uh, obviously, you saw the Google Maps. Uh, the spreadsheets in YouTube are also Google Beta APIs, so I can, I can show videos right in, my, um, right in my mashup. And we have a few more here. I think I mentioned Calendar on the last one. I never saw that before. Right. Calendar, Contacts, Picasa, Blogger, and more. So to round out my um, presentation, I'm going to try once again here to show you a quick sample, an interactive sample of of a few samples that I've done personally. Let's see what we got. It's mirror. All right. So, so these are um, obviously you've seen a couple already with the uh, with the uh, Google Developer Workshop and the Google All Matter uh, registration forms. But this is uh, this is one I was particularly proud of. I made it. Um, around Halloween, obviously. Uh, the Monster Mash is a really catchy song. Um, so this has three parts. Um, it has, of course, a map. And uh, the data on the right is from users. So actual, the, the whole point was that users could go in and, um, and select uh, and put their own like little parties, and, you know, kind of help spread awareness of, of uh, what events are going on. And um, this list is nicely geotagged and linked to the map. So that all I have to do is, for example, click an item on the list, and the map um, scrolls and highlights, and you see a little description right above. And then, um, you know, for example, Freak Night is over there in Washington, and whatever this is is all the way, I believe, in uh, Singapore. So all kinds of fun stuff there. And um, it's a full little Google Map view um, right in your browser. So, for example, you, can, uh, you, you see the map types, the satellite and the hybrid. And um, just like you would on, on the Google Maps, dot, uh, sorry, on maps.google.com. So the shopping um, is really nicely tied into Google Base. So Google Base has like product search listings. 
So for example, I can click on um, candy corn. And um, it should load a feed with uh, all the Google base listings for candy corn. And so these are uh, these are things that are pulled from eBay and it shows the prices really nice like. And um, you have like which costumes and you see like a nice little image associated with every one of those. And the media uh, doesn't look very nice now because the CSS changed a little bit uh, since I first launched it. But um, Picasso web albums and YouTube um, are both Google data properties. So that means that you can pull in feeds that contain pictures and videos and show them in your, directly in your mashup. So I have it set here so that when I click like uh, an image, I see a larger version load on the right. So these are just like a little thumbnail view. And I also have a little bit of uh, YouTube on the bottom, so I could um, I could load movies directly in just by clicking just by clicking um, a little uh, entry there and see it load right in the back, and I can play it directly within my mashup. So this is obviously very uh, I don't know how loud this will be. Okay, um, it's obviously uh, pretty neat. 